uh, yeah, as I explaining here, uh, right? I think uh, so. Uh, see, it's like Java has got various packages. Uh, so this is uh, so here we have a package. It's a package one or whatever. And in some package, uh, we got as a member of a package, we got class, interface, enum, annotation. Okay. And uh, yeah. Now, uh, so outer is a member of a package, right? Okay. And then we have a class called inner one and inner two. They are members of, they are member of a class, right? Okay, so now uh, what is private? Let's understand the meaning of private. So uh, when I say private, fine. And if there is something which is member of inner one, okay, uh, it's private to whom? It's private to the outer. Because inner one, inner two, they are members of outer. Okay. Outer belongs to the package. Right? So within package, what is my member? Outer. Anything within outer may be declared private. In, even inside any of the member is available throughout the outer. Everything declared within outer is available throughout the outer. Remember this. Okay. Because outer is the member of a package. And we don't look at uh, inner one and inner two. The accessibility private actually is for member of the package. Okay, so whichever is the member of the package, oh, outer is the member of the package, right? And therefore, private anything private within outer is available throughout the outer. Clear on this? And how that code has compiled? Okay. Yeah, so private here, 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 anywhere private, oh, it's available throughout the outer. And the excessive access is within the outer. Fine. Okay, fine. Let's get started with uh, today's session. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have the. Okay. Okay, so it's about functional interfaces today. Okay. Uh, fine. We start with the what are the changes in an interface? Yeah. Uh, sir, what happened uh, when we compiled that code? When we? I, I didn't get sorry. The previous code you. You okay. Explaining. It went by new. So was I have compiled uh, and it no. gets compiled without error. Yeah, this one. It has compiled. See, I am compiling that code outer inner dot Java, right? And you can you can find even in bin folder. Okay. What do we have? Outer, outer dollar one, outer dollar two. Oh, the things have come. Right? That's it. We are checking accessibility. Yes, sir, yes, sir. got it. Sir. Yeah. Sir, so how the inner class uh, accessible inner class private members accessible to the outer class? Yes. And uh, so uh, see, inner belongs to where? Where does inner belong? It belongs to outer. Okay, so when we are declaring private, it is private within the entire outer. Okay, and it's not about uh, that. Oh, private means only if, uh, if private is there in inner uh, inner one. It's not available only in inner one. It's available because inner one belongs to outer. Outer is a class, right? Which is part of a package. So. Your private accessibility is for the member of the package. Understand this. Inner one belongs to outer yes. and not to the package. Outer is the one who belongs to the package. Okay. So when we are talking of private, yes, it is private in outer. 
inner one inner to anything you are declaring as private is available throughout the outer okay it's, we say it is private to the outer okay, and look at it as private to outer and inner one inner to their member of outer and therefore yes it is available okay yeah any other question sir right? so inner yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to put that inner class members can be access, accessible, accessible by outer, but mm -hmm. outer class members cannot be accessible by inner. Uh, we have we have accessed everything. Each one of them has accessed the other two. Look at that code again. So, but you put the inner class, the outer class is a pair. It means you turn outer class members. Yeah, look at this code. Packages, right? This is the outer class. Okay. So, uh, this is one private, so it is available in outer, throughout the outer, right? Okay. Yes, sir. This is private, belonging to inner one, but inner one belongs to outer, inner one belongs to outer, right? And therefore, this is available throughout the outer. You can see this is compiling when I'm saying uh, in one. Yes, dot y in one dot z they are a member of inner one and inner two available in outer right this is uh, out dot x and into dot z right into the dot z is member of the other inner class and i am accessing it here because it's member of outer they are all part of outer okay it is kind of an set class uh, sorry. Sorry, uh, this is a concept of uh, like a uh, platform. This is concept of uh, access specifier. What is the meaning of private? Right. Private is private to the member of package. Okay. Right? Member of package here is outer. See, uh, if you write a class and you don't make a packet declaration, it means there is a package known as the unnamed package and so they belong to the package called the unnamed package okay fine clear yes sir, clear, clear okay fine so then let's proceed okay so today's agenda let's do that Okay, so any questions from uh, yesterday's exercise? Anything which you could not do or anything? What was the exercise yesterday? We wanted to convert that uh, array into a list. Right? That was the main part. Yeah, make that change. I'll show the change. Yes, sir. Okay. This is done with a new. So here so is. There the, were two, three doubts in the first question where we have to change the transaction array into a list. So for that, we had to uh, first import the uh, your Java dot. Uh, Little. Yes. List the packet. Uh, Java so dot. Why we just uh, simply do it by uh, importing the collections package? Uh, we can do like this: import Java dot util dot star. Okay. Fine. Just put import Java dot okay. util dot star. So Java dot uh, yeah, the collection framework is belonging to the Java dot util package. Okay. Fine. Okay. Okay, so this is one and thing. And uh, the next thing was, yeah. Uh, the next thing, the next thing was uh, when I created the object of a list uh, in the Angular brackets, I passed down the class name called transaction. And uh, after trans creating uh, its instance, to create its instance, there were three choices. Like uh, I want to create a link list uh, or uh, an array list. So what is that? Uh, can you please uh, elaborate on that? Yeah. See, uh, uh, list is an interface, fine. The implementation classes which we very commonly use here is the array list, okay. 
for list implementation class normally used the, is a array list uh, linked list is also a class which is a part of java util package and that is also implementing the list interface it's more than a list but yeah so normally for a list we will be using the array list okay and, and we want to add a method called get passport okay and so uh, these three things is what we have to do right i think the first one is done yesterday and find use list okay I, i'll show the changes and then you can again look at the things okay so yeah i have done this patch is fine uh, so we won't need these two things now okay i'll comment the note yeah and uh, we are, won't need this we won't need this okay but instead of this and this also yeah we don't need this also all of this okay so what are the uh, uh, what is the substitute for all of uh, for both of these things instead of these two we will be using a private list of uh, transaction okay and, and we'll call this as passport we can initialize equal to new here we can use the array list okay and so that's the first thing right okay now accordingly we'll have to update everywhere okay so let's see where we have used that passport wherever we have used anything related to the passport we'll have to make a change so don't we need to uh, pass the transaction class name in the array list the angular package in the array list is it a compulsory or is it optional acha okay here uh, yeah here this is actually you can put here okay but uh, from java 7 onwards uh, this is like uh, there is what we call is a automatic type inference okay so uh, while calling the constructor from the left hand side it knows that yes this is a transaction so compiler is able to derive this uh, it is able to infer this from the context how it is used it knows okay this is about transaction so even if i am not putting it's fine this, so this is uh, you, uh, fine we, this is known as a diamond operator basically left uh, fine uh, greater than less than uh, sorry less than and greater than so this is known as a diamond operator this is available from java 7 onwards okay for so this is like okay, auto, yeah automatic type inference okay so for that reason yeah uh, even, so even if you put it it's fine uh, but from java 7 you if, uh, you uh, it's not mandatory to put it okay and so you might have done like this probably yeah so this is also fine okay and uh, so And but remember, uh, automatic type inference is available, and it's not mandatory to put the uh, type parameter here. Okay. Fine. And now let's see uh, what is uh, what are the other places where it could change. Account dot this dot passport. Uh, oh, we don't need all of this, right? Yeah. We don't need that checking thing. and uh yeah this part right so i'm commenting it out and this is simply replaced by one statement what's that statement yeah yeah we were putting it in the array right we were assigning this into the array right the code was to put it in an array right but now we just add into the array list okay fine let's see if there is any other place we need a change transaction type is everything is done okay uh, yeah oh we have the print passport yeah so in the print passport yeah what do we do uh, running balance zero transaction is equal to int equal to null Okay, we have declared transaction t equal to null. Uh, we probably may not need this one. Okay, and okay, so this one is fine. But here, instead of writing these two statements, 
ओके व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज वेरी जस्ट से ओके फॉर ईच ट्रांजैक्शन टी इन पासबुक या या यू कैन डू इट लाइक दिस एंड नथिंग एल्स इन दिस सी वी वेर एक्सट्रैक्टिंग द एलिमेंट टी हियर वॉट वी वेर डूइंग वॉज वी वेर एक्सट्रैक्टिंग दैट एलिमेंट टी फ्रॉम द एरे ओके सो दैट्स वी आर पुट गेटिंग इट विद हेल्प ऑफ फॉर इच वी आर गेटिंग इट फ्रॉम द अरे लिस्ट ओके फ्रॉम दैट लिस्ट ऑब्जेक्ट राइट ओके आई थिंक दैट्स इट दिस इज डन oh here a uh, new transaction this is okay and so in deposit withdraw wherever uh, balance was to be updated we just uh, we are only creating the object of transaction okay yeah yeah i think it is fine now Right. So this should compile and it should be running also. Okay, let's compile and check the code. Uh, okay, what we did for hash code yesterday, I think I left something just like that. Line one seventy eight and one eighty eight. Let's see. equals and hash code. What's the error message? method equals is yes, already sir, different acha we are having it twice yes, it seems yes sir okay uh, i think we did yesterday so i think i can remove from here then right what have we done uh, yesterday we did it and put it somewhere earlier right it was this only uh, yeah yeah it was this only and hash code okay i'm removing this one right so yesterday what we have added let it be that one so it was already there and i added yesterday anyway so i'm keeping the one which we did yesterday okay okay this compiles and then it runs there won't be any change okay it's working yeah okay now what was the other there was one more change to be done what was that change so in withdraw and deposit we have to when we need a method called get passbook to return a list of transaction Sir, in the uh, methods withdraw and uh, deposit, yeah. uh, the new transaction instance is uh, left open. So, uh, do we need to add it in the passbook as it is a transaction of? Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, uh, the passbook is a group for the transaction instances. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Okay. Fine. So, uh, you, if you look at the transaction constructor, fine. Just come back and look at the transaction constructor. What is it doing? What is this statement? uh this one what is this so when you call the construct of transaction when you say new transaction uh so if anyone creates a new transaction the constructor itself is adding into the passbook 
see we have a what i have done here is a mechanism right which ensures that if a transaction is created a entry goes in the passbook entry cannot go in a passbook without creation of a transaction balance cannot be updated unless a transaction is created there's no other way balance will be see balance is not you don't have any statement which updates the balance except for this one place so if a transaction is there only then the balance is affected if a transaction is there then the entry goes in a passbook and no otherwise no other Got it, sir. yeah so uh, there's only one place we are doing it right uh, instead of all over the place yeah yeah so uh... Uh, if any of the transactions are happening, every time the transaction will happen, uh, so it will make a new object every time. Yeah, transaction okay. object has to be there, right? Each time a transaction occurs, you do a deposit or withdraw. Uh, I have to create a transaction object and keep it in the passport. Right? No. So, sir, if hundred transactions are happening, so hundred objects of the transaction. Yes, yes. Are yeah, yeah. Right. That's how we have designed it, okay? Okay. Hash code. Okay, uh, fine. There is one more uh, exercise, right? One more uh, which was about add a method called get passbook to return a list of transaction. Yeah. So how do we write this? We want a method called get passbook. Yeah. We have the other getter methods: uh, get up count number. Yeah. Where are the other get methods in the account class? Yeah. Here is equals and hash code then we have the print passbook okay then we have the uh, okay constructors after constructors i think yeah here are the get account number name balance and then we'll add one more method here okay before going for the deposit let's add a method method returns why uh, returns a list of transactions okay method name is get passbook yeah how do we write this yeah return you know the instance variable then we have the instance variable by the name passbook Here. Yeah. So this is uh, the passbook which is here, right? This is getting updated with every transaction uh, addition is done. Okay. So we would now want this passbook to be available, right? So someone says, okay, I want. Uh, we need a method called get passbook. So what would you do? How do you write the get passbook? Okay. Fine. Mostly, most of the time, fine. What you would have done is you would have said, "Okay, return this dot passport, right?" What's the problem with this dot returning this dot passport? It will uh, give access to the all of the transactions which yeah. we have abstracted from the user. Right. So, what should be done? We don't return this. Uh, list itself fine don't return the passbook as it is but what do we do there someone can create a copy and return it or another way is we would say so if you have looked at this method in the collections class there is in the collections class we have a method called unmodifiable okay and you give it a list so what is our list here this dot Okay, so what it is doing is it's creating a new uh, list, okay, where 
the list which will be returned on that list if you try doing uh, removal addition or setting a object on this no it won't be allowed okay fine but it is backed by the passbook itself so this list which is returned is a new list not the same list as this dot passbook but it is uh, it is being it is working on the passbook okay uh, it's able to give the passbook entries but it's not uh, no one will be able to update the passbook okay fine so collections class right java.util.collections that's a class and it has a method called unmodifiable list. Same way, there's a method called unmodifiable set, unmodifiable map. Okay. So anytime, do not ever return the data structure as it is. And always give an unmodifiable version if required. Right. Sir. Yeah. Can you say that the just uh, the version of the passbook which have been written from here? as uh, only the read mode activated not the write mode yeah it, it is only readable okay sir. Yeah. see uh, what is being done is something like this okay fine uh, you have a list object okay so uh, there is one list which contains a number of transactions right there are a number of transactions right uh, so this is our passbook, let's say. Okay. So when we are saying I want to return uh, 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 collect, uh, collections dot unmodifiable list, it creates one more list object. Okay. This list object is having a reference to this. Okay. So when you call a method on this particular, you are getting this list object. When you call any method on this list object, if it is a method for reading, it's a method for iterator, it's a method to convert into an array. It just invokes the method from the other list and gives it back to you. But if it's a method for saying, okay, uh, I want to add another element, it will throw an exception. Okay, fine. So you are getting a list object which is working on the given list. Okay, but if there is anything to update, it will call the set method to on a particular index, I want to replace the object, oh, it will throw an exception. Unsupported operation exception. So that should what should happen here. Okay. You want to remove, oh, that would be an exception. Yeah. Setting, removal, okay, or adding. Fine. All those methods will be giving an exception. So the user is written this object and not the object of the passbook. Fine. Okay, so these are the changes we, we wanted, and then yes, you could uh, use this method called get passbook. Okay, we may, fine. so it should be now be possible to use the method get passbook and use an iterator for each or something, right? Okay, see, we are defining the class account, but uh, as far as the, the usage of this class is concerned, it is happening from test account. Okay, fine. The test account class is the one which is using this. So in the test account, if you want, now you can use the uh, get passbook method. Okay, and do a for each. Okay. And so any questions in this, what we have done? Uh, there was one more exercise. I think it was about updating the bank class. Even bank class needs to be, up, to be updated. So it is bank.java. Here again, we wanted to use map instead of array. Okay, I have already got the imports available there. Okay, so we don't want to use an array. Okay, and we want to use a map. Private map of long, long for the account number and the account object. Fine, and this we'll call as a, let's call it as account map equals new 
uh, you can use hash map or tree map here i have kept a import for tree map okay see so with tree map it will be ordered by the key so our key here is account number right so we may be more interested in this okay fine here is the tree map okay so yeah constructor is fine let's see what other change will be needed now okay uh, i think the change comes in the uh, open account right oh here it is here account has been created and here i think the entry is being done in the array so this would not compile instead of what should be done yeah this dot account map dot put okay and what should be put you got the account object ac ac dot get account number yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. Uh, how are the numbers with underscore and uh, alphabets are working? Okay. Oh. Okay. Fine. Like above, uh, there's ten thousand with an underscore okay. with it. Okay, see this is a feature available since Java 7. Okay, so from Java 7 onwards, uh, let me explain. I'll put it in the notes here. Okay. So, uh, so let's come here. Okay. Uh, Java 7. So if you are writing a numeric literal, okay, just check this. Like, okay, uh, if I write uh, one, yeah, how much is that? Or suppose I put one more, yeah. How much is that? It's not readable, right? Can you like? Uh, uh, but if I had written like this, that's readable. So to improve the readability, fine. So it becomes more readable. Okay, fine. We are allowed to use underscores in a numeric letter. This is with the numeric types. Okay. Okay. Fine. With the numeric literals, it's numeric literals, right? Okay, and, uh, yeah. And okay. Uh, so uh, this is just uh, ask me that I can test a few things here. Okay. I'll check a few things with you. On this now uh, about the numeric letter, okay. Yeah, uh, which of these two is true and which is false? First one is true. First one is true. Second one is false. And and if it happens the other way around. Okay, I I'll give you a hint. True or false, this one. Now you should be able to answer. False. This is false. And what about Second this? Is true. true. So now can you get uh, what is here, what's happening here? Uh, it's taking in the yeah correct go ahead this is okay uh, checking for the decimal 
not decimal. Okay, uh, it's not a decimal system, right? Oh, decimal. Uh, decimal is octal. Yeah, this one is octal. And that we know, right? Fine. And you know, there's something which is even available if you try with C language also. It's, it has been always there. It's nothing new. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Just a zero, then it is octal. Okay. So if someone writes like this, Okay, if someone is writing, you know, uh, anywhere if someone says int a equals and he says 018, what do you think? What will happen? It's an error. It says I don't understand 018. This is not valid at all. 8 is not a valid octal digit. You started with a 0. Which if, so I understand you want to specify octal. You want to specify our value in octal terms. How can we use it? Get the point. Okay. Fine, clear? Not valid. So this is not zero uh, writing anywhere. If you just write 018 anywhere in the Java code, except for in the comment section, it would compiler has to give it as an error. I, I don't understand this too. Fine, you want to check that? Okay. And just quickly check this. Sir, uh -huh. then uh, how we can say that the value of one Zero one four, right? That's true. Yes, sir. Uh, you tell me two words, sir. How? How? Okay. What is uh, uh, octal zero one four? Convert to decimal. One minute. Yeah, it is one zero. It's eight plus four. It's twelve. Twelve now. 014 is 12, decimal 12, octal 14, decimal 12. So they are same value. Fine. Right. Now the point I have uh, just brought this is just you know from Java 7 onwards, you could even specify. What is it? What have I done? The last one, one, two, double equals zero B double one double zero. What is zero B? Start with the zero B to indicate you are giving in binary. You want to specify value in uh, numeric value as a binary? Okay, go ahead. You can do that. And one, one, zero, zero is in binary 1100, zero, zero, oh, that's decimal 12. And so this is true. Okay. So when you write a numeric literal in Java, fine, you have an option of specifying the numeric value in decimal terms. Then don't start with a zero. Okay. If you start with just a zero followed by some octal digits, you are giving an octal. If you start with 0x, you are giving hexadecimal, you can use hexadecimal digits following it. And if you start with 0b, then you can only use zeros and ones. Okay, only uh, bits. Right? Okay, so you can specify your numeric value as a binary, octal, decimal, hexadecimal. Okay, so binary thing wasn't there earlier. Fine. And C language uh, has the other things. Except for the binary, other things are available in C. And they have been there always. Fine. They have always been there. Octal thing was always there.
Uh, see, it doesn't uh, understand what is 0 and 8. The, the, <laughs> this is not a valid token at all. Anyway, okay, fine, clear on this. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Sir, can you tell me that, that uh, how does that double equals to work internally? Double equal to is comparison of equal to, all right? Comparison. Comparison of the numeric so, values. I want to know that how it is working internally in Java machine. It's a numerical comparison. There is a register in which 12 will be loaded. Okay, now when you write 0x0c, 0 0 right? Okay, it will have to be. Uh, uh, see, ultimately, it's all binary. And ultimately, everything is binary. Though you are writing 1, 2, fine. Uh, because you have written 1, 2, internally, what is the... Uh, yeah, okay, I will put it like this. Int A equals 1, 2, right? So, suppose someone writes int A equals 1, 2. Yeah, what do we get? You will have a... We get an integer. Huh? What is the size of integer? 4 bytes. Right? So four bytes, yes, four okay, bits. so 4 bytes you have got 32 bits. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, so what are those 32 bits? All 0, 0, 0, 0. At the end it would be uh, appropriate number of zeros. You have to maintain that this becomes total of 32. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what it would be. So, so you are writing one two. There, you know, there's a process of uh, compilation. The compiler is just converting that one two into this. Twelve. Uh, though you have written twelve, but yes, the uh, a would get this kind of the bits in a would be this. So you are writing one two, or you may be writing int b equals okay uh, zero one four. Okay, because you started with the zero, it understands you are trying to give an octal terms. Okay, and so there's nothing about yeah. yeah. Okay. It's all about how uh, it's just uh, uh, you know internally everything is just always binary. Focus at here. Yeah. And uh, it's what the language allows. That's one thing. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, Okay, so changes in the bank, yeah, we have to make changes in the bank, fine. Okay, so uh, we had this method called get account, given an account number. Now, since you are managing things in a map, right, so what should be the code? It would change here, right? This line should change. Instead of array, we will say AC equals yeah, and nothing changes. Uh, okay, but rest of the things are same because you know everyone used this method get account when they wanted to access account. See, array to the, uh, the array is not being accessed from any other place now, you will see that, okay. List accounts, and what is list accounts doing? For each account in accounts, yeah. Now, yeah, that should change. This for each would not work in list accounts. Okay. We want to have a for each in that case. What should be done for each account in account map dot values? When values will return a collection which is iterable, and then you can use it like this. Okay.
fine so this should uh, now also it should uh, fine now this should work let's check this compile and check and it's compiling It's working, right? Yeah. So account list accounts was done, and that's working. Yeah. Other things were also there. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Clear. Okay. So let's proceed now. Yeah. Right. But any other questions from the code? Yeah, because uh, underscore was one thing which you wanted to understand. Yeah. What? Anything else? Any other question? Okay, then let's proceed. Yeah. So yesterday's changes I have done today, okay. and exercises, and changes in interface uh, from Java 8. Uh, I think you know about this, uh, much of the things here, right? Uh, that uh, from Java 8 onwards, we have, uh, we got this uh, 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 interface can have, so what are the members of an interface? What can go in an interface? We can have abstract methods. We can have abstract methods. So if you don't put abstract, you don't put any kind of a modifier, it understands everything by default. Any method is there, or oh, that it is an abstract method. Right. And then other is the static and final. Method. Method. Fine, we can see what are the members of an interface. So you can have constants. Fine. So that would be public and static final. Public static final. A variable declaration is always considered to be public static final. That's the only kind of variable you can have in an interface. Methods, yes, one of the kind of methods was abstract methods. So prior to Java 7, only these, uh, prior, prior to Java 8, only these two kind of members in an interface. From Java 8, two additional things. You can have static methods in interfaces and you can have default methods in interfaces. Fine, static methods, um, yeah. So, can you please tell me that why interfaces were introduced if you were happy with the abstract classes? Uh, interface and abstract class are different things. Fine. Uh, okay. Fine. Uh, uh, Java. Uh, okay. How interface and what's the difference between usage of interface and a class? Uh, I only know that uh, interfaces are used to extend multiple classes uh, for single. Yeah. Class. So multiple inheritance is enabled. See, all of these are we types. Can enable, uh, types all, all of these are types. So multiple inheritance of types was there. See, Java had multiple inheritance of types already. Okay. What Java eight has done is it has introduced multiple inheritance of behavior. With the help of default methods, we have now got multiple inheritance of behavior, but we do not have multiple inheritance of state. Okay, so I think the three statements which I made, okay, and that should clarify what you are asking. First thing, multiple inheritance of type was existing all the time, fine, because when you define a class, you can specify super types as in any number of interfaces. For an interface, you can specify any number of super interfaces. Okay, so a type has got direct super types, multiple, that was existing. But only, yes, of course, uh, the super types cannot be multiple classes, it can only be one class. Right? So, as far as class was concerned, why it was kept that way? So, what does a class have and what's the difference between class and interface? Basic difference. Something which has never been allowed in an interface but is always there in a class. What is there in a class but not in interface?
A class can be uh, instantiated and an interface can't be instantiated. Okay, uh, fine. We will soon see. <laughs> Uh, someone can say we are instantiating an interface. Uh, someone will be able to say that, yeah. But uh, anyway, it's not exactly an interface, but uh, it's like a class implementing that interface. But uh, see, the major thing from the members' point of view, what kind of members do we have in a class? And what kind of members do we have in an interface? I was making a statement. We uh, do but not have multiple. In, a, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Interface. There is a public only public. Uh, All members are public. But uh, what kind of variable do we have in interface? Only static and final. Public static final. Which means it's not about when we say static. What is static? Huh, has nothing to do with the object of that type. Static means oh, you don't need the object of this type in order to use me. Fine, a static variable can be used without having an object. Okay, fine. And maybe tomorrow's question is going to be something on that. Okay, I've given you a hint. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, Okay, so uh, and static. Uh, so uh, one thing what we do not have in interface is we don't have variable, instance variable. Instance variable. Every object has its own copy of the instance variable. It's uh, the objects keep a state, right? Objects have a state. Fine. So when I was saying we don't have multiple inheritance of state. That means, yeah, we cannot be inheriting instance variables from two super types. Okay, so interface basically is about behavior and not related to the state. It's more about methods and not about variables, not about the instance variables. Okay, so an object of a particular type will have all these kind of methods. That's what my concern is. Okay, so I'm concerned with the behavior interaction with the object okay rather than uh, how the various things are managed inside an object okay what kind of things are what kind of variables uh, does the object have fine so that i'm not concerned with but i'm concerned with the behavioral aspect that's where the interface is used okay so uh, no, sir. yeah abstract class someone was pointing out abstract class right uh, yes, you saw, saw our example of account class? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, has it, uh, is that class declared abstract? Yes. Then saw that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Has it got any abstract method? No. Fine. Then? We still declare it abstract. Why? Why do we have abstract class? To define it to the classes. You can use yeah. it on another class. It is to, uh, see when I design a class for the purpose of further inheritance. Don't use this class object. I would like you to create a subclass and then use it. Don't use it directly. No objects of this class, objects of only subclasses of this. Okay, fine, that's where you should go for abstract class. Fine. Interfaces are different thing because they only talk about behavior, nothing to do with the state. Okay, so abstract class are different from interface, they both have a different purpose. Okay, your no, abstract class. Yeah. What is the difference between inherit and, inherit and implement? Inherit and implement, uh, those are keywords of the language, right? So, uh, it's like this, when a uh, interface uh, want to inherit from, it can interfa interface can only inherit from other interfaces, it uses the word extends, fine. A uh, class wants to inherit from the same type, see, from the same type they've used the word extends, fine. From, uh, but inheritance from a interface by a class, use the word implements. 
So both the meanings are same, but keywords. They are related. Yeah, right? keywords because you uh, see with uh, you can't be mentioning multiple super classes. Okay, so when defining a class, yes, that keyword is there, extends is there to make say, okay, uh, I'm going to give only the class name. Okay, implements is there to indicate that I'm going to give interface names here. Okay, so I can give multiple. So my question was, both the meanings are same, right? In extends and implements. Yeah, it is just both, both are meaning same. Yeah, from the point of view of super types, yes, it's the same, and you are, it's about inheritance only. Both are related to inheritance only. Yeah. Okay, sir. So yeah. Okay. Fine. So we have static methods in interfaces and default methods in inter uh, interfaces. Uh, they were introduced in Java 8. Fine. Default methods in interfaces. Okay. And uh, yeah. Fine. Static methods were anyway, uh, when they put this. Uh, when they get, came up with this change in the interfaces, they did mention it that saying, okay, oh, static methods could always have been uh, introduced earlier itself. And they could have been there right from the beginning itself because they don't have anything to do with the objects. Okay, so interfaces could always have been having the static method. And uh, right? so as an example of a static method, yeah, you can always be having, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll look at that function interface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is also another point, right? Uh, okay. We have this uh, another, uh, you, you are aware of this Java 9? Interfaces, uh, someone was very keen, oh, we have only public uh, methods in interface. But yeah, you can even have private methods in interface. But you can't have protected, okay? It can either be public or it can be private. But which can, methods can be uh, private? Not the abstract methods. Abstract method can never be private, right? Abstract method can never be private. So the default method and the static methods, they both can be private also. And this uh, requirement came in Java 9, right? Uh, why do we have private methods? I'm not talking about only interface, even within a class. Why do you want to have a private method? To make it inaccessible by another class. Uh, to make it inaccessible. Or then why do you want to have a method? I'm just asking that. <laughs> why do you want to have a method then? And it, it won't be accessible, that's correct. But why did we have that private method? Okay. Sir, uh, yeah. Make the abstraction. Yeah, it's an abstraction because which is necessary for your. See, uh, uh, you know, there's something called a pragmatic programmer. I don't know whether anyone has read that. Pragmatic programmer. Pragm uh, so, uh, they do talk about principles. So one of the principles is dry principle. Do not, don't repeat yourself. Fine. So when we say uh, don't repeat yourself, uh, think about this method. Okay. Uh, look at the bank class, bank.java. Okay. This is an example of a private method which we have. What's the private method? There's one private method in that class. And what's a private method? Get account to return an account object. Given an account number, give me the account object. Fine. Hello, hello. Disconnection? Excellent. I'll just check. Achha. 
it was fine okay yeah uh, which is the private method get account right uh, why did we have that method see it's a very small piece of code but it is something which is going to be repeating everywhere because everywhere where what i am using given an account number i have to get the uh, corresponding account object and then do a deposit or withdraw or display or print passbook or whatever when various things are being done so every method would otherwise be having the two three lines of code right and the functionality is only about oh uh, given an account number i want to fetch the corresponding account object and if it is not available i need to throw the exception right so we don't want to repeat it right and of course we uh, this was uh, we don't, don't want to make the account object directly accessible to anyone okay and so we created that abstraction for get account method okay fine. so private method in class was fine but uh, interfaces everything was public but earlier we didn't have the option uh, anything to do with private methods but uh, because you are having default and static methods where you actually write an implementation right so you may be having certain code which is repeating okay repetitive and you may like to create a private method so that it can be called from the other default and static methods which are public they may want to use it okay and for that reason private methods were allowed from java 9 in an interface okay. uh, sir can you please repeat that why private methods okay uh, see they uh, if you have a private method it would be used only within that class or whatever that interface is it's not uh, fine it's not available outside okay fine so when you uh, prior to java 8 okay prior to java 8 we never had implementation it was only abstract methods which were there and therefore there was no question of have allowing a private methods okay fine we, uh, it didn't arise at all fine but when uh, in, from java 8 when in java 8 they introduce the uh, static and default methods fine where we write some kind of an implementation now if there is some code which is repeating in a uh, in a multiple methods or within a method also multiple times something is repeating you may like to create that abstraction of a method and create it and keep it as a private method within the class itself uh, within the interface so wherever you are writing implementations you would have a need for private methods earlier prior to that there was only abstract method which was available and therefore no need of a private method but from java in java 8 they realized oh we need private method so they put it in java 9 okay just because of static and default methods so you can have private method declared as uh, either static or declared as default okay. uh, okay sir clear yeah okay fine so first uh, example of a static method or you can have public static void void and that should work fine so this would compile and run also right? main method is the starting point so this would run okay, okay default method fine so uh, why the need of default method see one thing one very strong point about java as compared to any other language has been backward compatibility java keeps backward compatibility fine you come up with a new version of java but you don't have to throw away the old code which you had written which is the case in many of the things okay you don't have to throw away or you don't have to work on the old code again to make it compatible with the newer version okay so the maximum amount of compatibility has always been provided by java okay but it had a cost okay there was a cost to it for example uh, this is what example is 
So enhancing interfaces without breaking existing code, right? So that backward compatibility, if you wanted to maintain, then one of the things was that, oh, if I have written an interface, right? For example, the interface called list, okay? We have the list interface. We had it in Java 1.2. At that time, uh, uh, they didn't think about, oh, we should have a method sort, right? List should be sorted also, right? It should be possible to sort that. But the one who created that list interface in Java 1.2, they didn't put it. And now if he puts it, introduces in a newer version, what would happen? Because there were only abstract methods. You are putting oh, a list, of, any list should have a sort method implementation. But sort was never part of the uh, interface list. Can it be added? If I add, the old code would not compile. Okay, adding sort method to list interface, uh, the old code would not compile because any implementation of list, they may not have written the sort method and it would not compile. Okay, so what, what do I do? Oh, in that case, let's have a implementation. If you are adding a new method in an interface, we can add that by giving a default implementation. Okay, so if the, the class which is implementing this interface does not have this method and it would not have this method I have a default implementation for that class okay because it's a new method so I am allowed to add new methods provided I give a default and so then it would maintain backward compatibility okay so just because of backward compatibility uh, interfaces were never getting enhanced the library interfaces especially yeah. and, and, and that's why we had to introduce the default methods multiple inheritance of behavior and not just types so now we have got multiple inheritance of behavior because now we have got implementation even in uh, interfaces so interfaces have default methods giving us uh, uh, giving us the implementation yeah default method is implementation so what are the inheritance rules? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So what are the inheritance rules? Uh, inheritance rule would be something like this. Okay. So let me ask a few things. Okay. So uh, here you can just. Okay, so inheritance rules, right? Okay. Fine, uh, we understand there is a single inheritance of class. So when we uh, have a class, okay. So earlier how it was working was, uh, I don't know whether anyone has ever looked at what is a diamond problem with related to multiple inheritance. Has anyone ever read about diamond problem? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So uh, prior to Java 8, Java didn't have the diamond problem because interfaces never had a implementation method. Okay. Fine. So interface did not have the, uh, fine. so uh, if I have a class like this, I have a class A, okay, fine. it extends from B and it implements C, D, okay, let's keep three of them, okay, fine, it, it's like this, right, uh, this was the structure we had, okay, one class, and it has one super class and multiple super interfaces. Okay. So methods, what will be, uh, uh, yeah. Now what are, happens if we have C and, uh, yeah. So if there is B, B have, okay, let's, uh, fine, let's understand this. We have class B also. And it has got public void m1 
Okay, so let's keep this as M1. It may be abstract or non-abstract. Uh, fine, uh, let's not worry about it at this moment. Fine, what are the methods? So B has a method with this signature. Uh, we have the interface C and that has a method with this signature. Oh, this also has M1. But because it is interface, it is abstract. Fine. Here it is abstract or it may be concrete class. Right? Whenever we are inheriting from a class and interface the same method, right? the one from class is what will become available, not the one from interface. Clear? Okay. Okay, fine. So this is one thing. If there is say if there is the same method, yeah, the one from class will is what will be used. Okay, fine. Okay, uh, yeah, there is another one uh, which you should know here. Uh, okay, this is interface. Now maybe let's uh, look at it this way. We have an interface D. And this says, okay, I got a method M2, okay. So this is method M2. This is also having void M2. Yeah. Okay. C and D, they both have M2. And now I'm talking about Java. Uh, so yeah, what would happen? They both have M2. So is M2 available in A? It has to be fine. fine. And what of them is abstract? Okay, let's make uh, now since we have default, let's make use of default now. Okay, let's see. Yeah, if it is default, what happens in A? M2 available in two interfaces. What will A get? Will it inherit from C or will it inherit from D? No, it can't prefer one over the other, right? Okay, so this will never compile. Okay, in that case, this one will always have to say, okay, I am overriding. Okay, at the rate, override. And I will say, okay, public. Uh, I want to have the method M2. I'll have to override and give a method. Okay. Even if both of them are default available, you cannot be fine uh, because it creates an ambiguity. Okay. M2 available from two super types. Okay. If the two super, if out of the two super types where the same method is available, one if one of them is a class, then there is no problem at all. Fine. The one from class is what I'll, uh, what will prevail. Okay. Fine. And the one from interface not used. But uh, there are uh, there are both of them are interfaces from where the same method is coming. And there is a default in both cases. Even if it was abstract, I would have to overwrite because uh, any abstract method will have to be overridden if it's a non-abstract subclass, right? But in this case, yeah, what should be, what, so what do you think? What should be done? Now, I, I would prefer to use whatever is the implementation available in C. What should I do here? Yeah. So we can add super in interface D. Super in interface D. You want to go and make some change in D? Yes, okay. sir. Okay, uh, one more thing. Uh, let me also show some more thing here. At the rate, you are always free to override. Okay, public void m1, right? This you are free to override. 
okay uh, i want to do yeah whatever was there in in the super class b i would like to do that and i want to do, do something additional right in which case i will be using super dot m1 and then doing additional things right this is what we do right if there is a, a super a fine if the super class has something yeah we can use that method by saying super dot m1 clear this you have done right we know this yes sir okay now what about this case when it is a interface then what I want to use that method which is available in the interface C. That's how you use it. If you have a default method somewhere in an interface, use interface name dot super and use the method there. Fine, this is the new syntax. Okay. Fine, where super is also being used here. Okay. You could be using both of them. You want to do whatever is there in C followed by whatever is there in D. Okay, you can use that. D dot super dot M2. And maybe there is something, some more code. And then you may have this. Yeah. So it's up to you. Like the super methods, the default methods in the super type is available. But you will always need to override because it becomes, it creates an ambiguity. Right. If we had a default method M3, okay, fine. If there was a default method, I don't need to override here. M3 will be available to me. Okay, fine. On A, we will have M1, M2, M3, all three. Right. Even if I didn't override, M1 comes from my super class, M2 will, this overriding is a must because there are two sources from where I am getting M2 and both of them have the same status. They are both interfaces. It's not that one is a class, other is an interface. If one is a class, other is an interface, class is superior and from the point of view of inheritance. Okay, You consider what is the, whatever the super class is. Fine. You prefer that over interface. But there are two interfaces and they both have the method. Oh, in that case, you will have to override. You need to give your implementation. And you want to use a, a, any of the methods there, you can use that. Fine. How to use method of a super interface? Okay. Which is a default method. It should be a default method that you can invoke like this. Fine. Clear on this? And so multiple inheritance, right? It has its own problems also, <laughs> right? Because this, uh, you know, uh, overriding is must and all those things. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Let's proceed. Sir, uh, interface. Yeah. In interface, we must have to give the body of default method, or is it can be? You have to. You have to. Body? You have to give a body. I, I have not shown it. Okay, I have not shown it. If you are writing a default, you have to write the body. Okay, I have not put the semicolon, whereas this has to have a semicolon. Okay, I have not shown the body. Okay, you will have some code. If it's default, you have so a code. So, without it will not work. If, it is, you, if you are saying default, there has to be a body. If it is not declared default, it is abstract. If it is not declared static, it is abstract. So only three kinds of things. You may explicitly mention abstract also. That's fine. Right? Okay, sir. Got it. Okay, here also. Yeah. So you can keep that. Okay. Okay. So over here we can also put uh, super keyword in interface D, right? So that we can uh, get the method of interface C. We have done that C dot super dot M2, right? Yeah, and also D dot super dot M2. I have shown it here. Yeah, I want to tell that 
uh, in interface D, we can just write super there. So we can get the methods of interface C. No. D is not extending C. Is it extending C? No, no, sir. No. Yeah. Okay. And if D was if D is not extending C, they are two independent, right? Yes, yes. You got it. Right. Okay, uh, fine. Now, talking about a functional interface. So, what is a function? Okay. A block of code which can be reused one again and again. Yeah, yeah. Good. Fine. I, I, I'll show it here. Okay, how we have to visualize and look at a function from. Okay. Now, look at the function as something like this. So function is just like a box, okay, which has some kind of a implementation code, which takes inputs, okay. There can be multiple inputs. These are what uh, specified in terms of parameters, right. So these are the inputs to a method, okay. A function takes inputs and it may at the most be returning only a single value, right. Generates an output that gives a value, right, results in a value. Or sometimes it's not returning. Sometimes return type void is there. Okay. Fine. It's just one box like this. Right. Okay. And then of course we are giving some name to it. Right? But, uh, but main important part is oh, what kind of input it takes and what kind of output it generates. That is what forms the method signature. Right. You can keep on changing what is the code here. Right. Your coding in this box can be different. But oh, important is, oh, I take these many inputs, the kind of inputs which I take are these and I'm going to generate an output which is like this. And that's how we look at a function. Okay, something, a box taking input and generating at the most one output. And zero inputs can also be there. Okay. okay. Functional interface to represent a function type. Right. So we use, uh, we have a, uh, what is a function interface? It is something which can represent a function type. Okay. Functions are now first class citizens of the language. Okay. To understand this statement, first class citizen of the language. Uh, but you have to consider that second statement, second line also here. Okay. So what is a function interface? Yeah. It, it is something which represents a function okay fine the function which i just talked about okay just okay it's that kind of a box here sir after is function and method both are same or yeah i am considering same okay sir okay now what is a function interface let's look at that yeah what is a function interface So it is having only one abstract method. Okay. Okay. And examples are there. Uh, I don't know whether you have done. Uh, runnable you would have uh, done. Comparator I think you have not done yet. Right. Uh, action listener. Uh, GUI. Did you have any GUI thing? No. No, no, no sir. No, no GUI. Oh, okay. So action listener comes from GUI. But there are many examples of function interface. Okay. Uh, you gone, uh, yeah, any other example from the Java library which you have used as a function interface? Comparator you have done, right? So, okay, but let me now uh, put, uh, give that example of uh, comparator only and I'll show you what that comparator is like, okay? How many function interfaces it has? How many uh, abstract methods it has, right? Let's check that. Okay. So, from functional interface point of view, if I look at this interface, public interface, comparator of some type T, and this one says, yes, we have a public method returns in name of the method is compare. Uh, it takes parameter, 
okay so this is one abstract method and it says oh i have one more abstract method public method returns boolean method name is equals and object so how many abstract methods are there in this is it only one abstract method One, oh, there are two abstract methods. Aren't they two abstract? Both of these are abstract. Right? But it is still a functional interface. Okay? This is still a functional interface because when you count the abstract methods, do not consider the public methods of the object class. Okay. So functional interface is a single abstract method ignoring. And you have to ignore the public methods of the object class. Right? So this is still a function interface because this is a public method of the object class. Okay, and therefore we are we don't we have to ignore it. Uh, fine, and then we say okay, this is only one abstract method from that point of view. Okay, so single abstract method ignoring the public methods of the object class. Clear on this? Okay, but right? so this is being more precise rather. Okay, and what is a lambda expression? And lambda expression is a function. See, uh, that box which I had shown, let's see that from that point of view. Okay. What is a lambda expression? The syntax goes like this. It has input parameters, fine. So, uh, like when I created that box, I said, oh, you can have any number of inputs. So, that's a list of input parameters. We have the lambda operator, that hyphen greater than, it's called the lambda operator. And then in braces, you have the implementation class. Right? Example, there are examples of uh, function interfaces. Right? Uh, for example, we have a uh, int binary operator. Let me consider that int binary operator. So it says fine, okay, lambda expression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is the lambda expression? It is a function. Okay. Fine. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I'll start with the word. It's a function, but yeah, it is an implementation of. It's an implementation basically, right? It's an implementation of object class. It's an implementation of the single abstract method of a functional interface. Okay. So when you write a lambda expression, fine, lambda expression can only be used in the context of a functional interface. Let's look at an example like this. Okay, uh, we understand object is the super type for everything, right? I can assign anything to an object, right? If I say object O equals, I can put anything here, any, any data type, right? 
uh, let me first give example of the lambda expression for example i have one functional interface called int binary operator okay so that's the name of a functional interface it's a type i can declare a variable uh, op1 so that's an operator 1 equal to and on the right hand side yeah what do we do yeah we can use a lambda expression. okay we can use a lambda expression so in lambda expression here uh, a int binary operator has a method which takes two integers and returns a int so it says fine i have int a comma int b those are my two inputs and uh, let me write a code and so here is the method body and the method body may simply say return a plus b. I am just taking a very simple case. Okay. Fine. So, this being an assignment, I will have to put a. So, this from here to here, what is this? It is a definition of a function which takes two inputs and returns this, right? Okay. Now, uh, when we have only single statement and that too is a return statement, fine, then it can be reduced to I don't need the braces. There's only one statement. So I don't need. That's fine. I won't need the braces. Okay. But then you can't. You can't have a return statement in the statement. You just have to put your expression. Okay. So this is what it becomes. The right hand side. Uh, fine. Uh, in the lambda operator, the right hand side can be written like this. If it's a single thing which you are returning some expression, or you can just put that expression here. No, fine, don't put the return statement in such a case. Okay. Another change which we can do here is in the int binary operator, because I know the type here, this is saying int binary operator, I already know that in the int binary operator, the abstract method which it has got, fine, that single abstract method which it has got is taking two integers as parameter. I, I don't need to specify the types here. Okay, it's not much necessary, and I can just write like this also. Okay, so in general, yes, this is what is the general syntax for a lambda expression. Okay, and up to this point. So, uh, okay, so what is a lambda? What exactly is this lambda expression? Or okay, uh, let me put one more example here. Okay, I, I'll change this. Okay, uh, let me have one. Uh, uh, instead of returning, okay, instead of I will have to keep the return statement since it has a return type of in. Let's keep multiple statements in this. Okay, so before I return, I, I do a system dot out dot print. Maybe I just want to print it. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So this is somewhere I have this line of code. Right? This is the code which I would execute. So what do you think? When I execute this code, will it print A and B? If I execute this statement, will it be printing A and B? What is the effect of this statement? What is the exact effect of this statement? Yes, sir, it will print and return. It will print. Okay, now let's understand this part. You think it will print? what it is doing is okay we have one variable called op1 okay fine and equal to what have i given i have given it a function 
basically there is an object which is created this is the object which has the function definition and a op1 is simply made to refer to this it's not about executing the function it's about i have a function definition this is a function definition okay fine the see the right hand side fine this entire thing right hand side of the assignment is not a function which is to be executed at this place it is a function which is being defined and put in a variable so a function definition goes in op1 it's not about executing this function does it become clear now because normally whenever we see some piece of code written somewhere in a particular line we think it's executing the statement here no it's not okay so when you are writing a lambda expression you are actually creating one object which is a function object clear what is lambda expression now it is a function you are creating a function object prior to this functions were available as class definitions only right in a class definition or you have some function you have some methods but now i have a variable which holds a method and that same variable can hold a different method at a different point of time right i i, I can replace it and say okay fine op1 is of type uh, in binary operator i can say op1 equals and i'll say Uh, a comma b, and I'll replace it with a different function. A into b, yeah, maybe something like this. So it's pointing to a different function. It's not executing that function. It's creating this function and keeping it in op one. When clear on this? no a function is created and this is a function the function definition says i'm taking two inputs and i do something like this whatever statements are there okay so the whole thing the object for that is created that's it a lambda expression is just one object create an object it's not about executing what is written in that function how will i execute that function i know op1 holds a function i want to execute that function how will i do it what's the code how will i execute that function by calling that function yeah how will i call it from op1 dot i need to pass two integers give the two inputs required something like this then you will find system out print okay this will do that system out print l in execution a and b will then be pre, uh, printed okay it's not apply basically it's a uh, function in is apply as it yeah okay it's called apply as it okay clear yeah, function interface and lambda expression okay so lambda so expression yeah so the apply as int wo uh, inbuilt method apply as int is a abstract method so okay humne int binary operator abhi tak dekha nahi na kya hai chalo yahan pe uska definition likha hai public interface int binary operator i am not giving the exact uh, definition okay but uh, principally you understand that this has got one abstract method the one abstract method available here okay returns in name of the method is apply as in takes two integers as parameter ye uska interface definition hai 
there are other things because it's not only about abstract methods there are default methods static methods wo bhi sab hoga but abstract method jo hai wo ek ye hai aur this is the only abstract method which we have okay see when you are writing a lambda expression you are not bothered about what is that name of the abstract method you are more bothered about what is the method signature clear yeah. Sir, in this int binary operator, uh, mm -hmm. every method has only two parameter or more than two parameter. No, it's there's only one method in that which is abstract. Uh, see, a uh, functional interface by definition says only one abstract method. So there, we are not talking about more than one method. So if there is a method, okay. it has a signature. Huh? Yes. Okay. So it has only two parameters. Yeah. Yeah, this method is there, and this is the method name. This is how it is. No, I am asking about is there more parameters in that method, or is there in the only two? Methods? No, this is the exact method okay. which we have for int binary operator. A different function interface would have a different method. Okay, but one function interface, one method, and the signature is known. Fine, unless uh, okay. they would have put something like int, uh, not int, well, some reference name, integer dot dot dot, oh, then multiple. <laughs> Fine, but then it's like an array. Okay. Fine, but okay, this so fine signature is fixed. Some fixed signature uh, depending on the type. Ah. When, but visualize it as an object, right? It is a function object. When the right hand side here is a creation of an object and not execution of that function, it's creating a function. Okay. So now we have an exercise here. Define a functional interface called penalty, having an abstract, uh, having an abstract method. It should be method called compute which takes input parameters as minimum balance and the balance and returns the computed penalty. So uh, in our current account class, and we have the current account class where it is currently, okay, update the current account class to allow setting of a penalty as a function instead of value. So in, in, in the current account class currently, we have a fixed value for the penalty. Okay. Also add a method to set the penalty function on the current account object. Okay. So we want this method public void set penalty as a method in the current account class. Okay. Let's look at it here. Let's uh, let me show you what is uh, what is currently there in the current account class. Oops, account is already open. Okay, you see there is a penalty which is a fixed value of 100. Okay, so we don't want that. Okay, and the idea is we don't want this. Okay, instead, actually per account object, fine, per current account object, we want a private variable. Okay, what I want here is a private variable. Uh, we are not keeping it static now. Uh, fine, we want it as an instance variable and we want keep it of type long but rather than that we want a penalty so we want a type called penalty equal to here you should be able to use a lambda expression if you want yeah. so you may assign a lambda expression but so this must be defined as a function interface so have a function interface by the name penalty uh, i have already mentioned what is the uh, what's the method which is needed in that so it has a method by the name compute. So your abstract method will be compute. 
with two input parameters minimum balance and the balance okay and then it should return a penalty amount so that uh, so two inputs are long and it is returning a long okay fine so that's your exercise okay and then this has to be used add appropriate constants and static methods in the penalty so that will be anyway second part uh, so currently yeah, you may ever, even if you don't do that that's fine and let penalty extend from the long okay this also we may skip first two things but use a lambda expression to set penalty function on a current account object that's something which has to be done okay uh, you you actually you have done uh, function interfaces already right like right. Function interface was done. Okay, so you you to some extent you have used the function interface, right? Okay, coming back to some more, uh, some uh, another information related to the function interface. Let me just put one more thing here. Sir, can you show the exercise slide? Exercise slide. Yeah, uh, actually, I've shared. On, uh, I'll be sharing this uh, also. Uh, this one. Okay. Uh, uh, this uh, slide. Uh, this presentation PDF file. I'll be sharing. When you could uh, see your uh, PDF file uh, uh, yesterday's one, right? Okay, so yeah, same thing I'll do here. Okay, fine. Uh, let me just show quickly uh, one more example here. Okay, so in binary operator OP equal to this, right? Now, uh, one thing which I was uh, earlier talking was, suppose if I have object O equals, I can assign anything here, I can assign OP1, right? Okay, this would be valid. Object is super type of everything, right? But what about if someone says object O equals and he says, let's have this one. Uh, I put a lambda expression. Will this be valid? What do you think? object O equal to and I give a lambda expression. Yeah. Everything is assignable to the object type now. Yes sir, it is valid. It will not compile. Okay. okay. And see the what are the reasons here? A lambda expression does not have a type. A lambda expression does not have a type. Okay. Its type is inferred from the context. from the context where it is used. So how you are using it from that it will know what it what is the type. Okay. So if you are right here, see in this case this is valid because OP1 the type is known. The type is int binary operator and therefore it knows yes this is int binary operator and that anyway is already assigned here. But when you write this, this is not known. Okay, but I can still go ahead and assign. Let me see, I'll show you how it can be done. Okay, so if I wanted to assign this, yeah, I will have to mention okay, that this entire thing from here to here is a int binary operator. 
then this is valid. Fine. The type is now known because you know a particular method signature taking two input uh, which are integers and returning. So I have an expression which is taking two integers and returning an integer. Right? This is what the lambda expression on the right hand side is showing. Fine. But from that, how do you know what is the type? It's not only int binary operator having one abstract method like this, but there are so many other function interfaces, and they may all have the uh, which also share the same signature. So given a lambda expression, you don't know what it is, just the lambda expression alone. But from the place where you are using it, it knows. And for example, when we were using it here, okay, from the left hand side, it knows this is of type int binary operator and therefore this lambda expression is an int binary operator because whatever is coming on the left hand side that is used for the derivation, right. So here. Yeah. From this expression, okay, from this, uh, find, uh, this is of type what is there in the, here, okay. From the left hand side of the assignment, it knows that this is an int binary operator. So, lambda expression, the type is inferred from the context how it is used, okay. If there is some place where you are writing a lambda expression, and I was mentioning some place that, uh, Functions are now first class citizens of the language. What do we mean by that? If you recollect here, yeah, third statement there. First class citizens of the language. What do we mean by that? Okay, what it really means is, you know, uh, before this, uh, before this Java 8, right, only thing like you have the primitive types and you had the objects which were possible, right, objects were of classes, right. So you had classes and you had objects of those classes and uh, you could uh, have them, into, uh, you could assign them into a variable, objects could be put in a variable, you could be returning uh, in the return statement, you can put an expression which is about an object, fine. We can uh, find wherever we want, any place we can use objects, fine. We can use primitive values and here wherever you like, you can use a function now. A lambda expression is just a function. Okay, fine. See, for example, uh, I have a method, okay, public method. It says I, I, you return a int binary operator. Okay, I'm just taking because we have seen the method signature here. Okay, a method which says okay, I return an int binary operator. Some method is available. It may be taking some inputs. Fine, fine. So in this here, you can just say return and I can be writing a function, right? Yeah. Oh, you are, you are returning a function, isn't it? Just like you were returning objects, fine. You were dealing with objects, right? The way you were dealing with objects, now you are able to deal, have a similar dealing with the functions. Okay, functions can be returned, functions can be used as while invoking a method, okay, uh, there's a method which says, okay, uh, there's some public void, okay, some, okay, we have another, okay, and it says, okay, uh, you can give me as a parameter an int binary operator. Okay, it's a function which I'm taking as parameter and you could be doing the fine. You could have some code where it might say uh, f1 dot and somewhere it will say f1 dot applies it. Okay, so it may be using it. Fine. But to invoke that method, oh, someone might say, okay, I want to invoke another method and what do I do here? I pass a lambda. 
So I'm creating a function and giving it. Yeah. So it can be a parameter passed as a parameter. Right? The way you were doing whatever you did with objects, you can do with a function. A lambda expression is simply a function. We look at it as a function definition. So you're able to play with function definitions. Okay, you'll see more examples of these kind of things. How functions are used, uh, uh, you combine two functions to create a new function. Okay, all such things would be working for us. Okay. Okay, so exercise is there, fine. Uh, you should try that exercise and let's move further. Method and constructor reference, syntax for method reference. Yeah. Okay, now uh, it's like this that uh, for okay for many of the methods for uh, for many of the function interfaces uh, or, or rather when you use uh, there will be many cases where you would have used a lambda expression. Okay. Now, there are certain cases of lambda expressions where, so not all lambda expression, but some special cases of lambda expressions which can be written in another form, okay, which we call as a method reference and constructor reference. So, there is something called method reference and a constructor reference and uh, it may look, make the code look much more elegant, okay. It, it, it will not look so cryptic, okay. Okay, just to make the code much more better to read, okay, and more concise rather, code can look much concise. Fine. And I think for this you will have to do some practice, then you can understand this better. Or before going into constructor and method reference, okay, uh, I think what I'll do here is I'll take this a little later. Before this, let me show you the standard function interfaces and let's look at the standard set of functional interfaces. So in Java, we have a place where we have uh, a, a full set of 43 function interfaces, okay. So there are 43 function interfaces which have been uh, defined in this package and these function interfaces, these 43 function interfaces have been used throughout the other parts of the API. Okay. So the very, these are the most commonly found method signatures because we understand a function interface is more about when we have to write a lambda expression, it is more about a method signature. Okay. So what kind of function it is? Okay, so accordingly, we have categorized the functions. Let's see this. Uh, I am skipping the portion related to the method and constructor reference uh, because to understand this, uh, we need some more examples. And for getting to the examples, we'll have to understand the standard function interfaces. Okay, then we'll be able to get some examples which we can show. Okay. So categories of function interfaces, right? So function interfaces, I have get those 43 function interfaces which are part of the java.util.function package, right? I have categorized them here, okay? So this categorization is based on the signature, okay? Fine, so let's see. So first category, we call them as consumers, okay? So one category called consumer, consumer are functions with para 
with a parameter fine they have some parameter one or more parameter and return no, fine have return type of void so they don't return a value okay we call them as consumer they just take inputs but they are not returning so return type is void they are not returning any kind of a thing here okay they mean uh, so they just consume whatever input you give okay so the, fine so from this point of view uh, okay just one more point here uh, as far as uh, the primitive types are concerned okay fine you know all the primitive types right which are the primitive types integer float double fine character. yeah okay uh, now uh, if i uh, if you say care byte short or care right they are literally getting converted into int whenever they have to use them they are uh, they always going to be converted into an int and then used and internally java has actually got only four numeric types numeric types okay boolean is there but other than this you know internally byte short or a char fine they would just be treated like int they are numeric values okay int is becoming a super type for them Okay. Fine. So byte short care we don't consider them. Now between float and double, just look at that float and double. What is float and double? They use multi sign exponent form. And you should be aware that they follow uh, what is known as a I triple E seven five four standard. The representation is according to I triple E seven five four. Okay, that's the standard which is being. Uh, applied for single precision and double precision floating point values okay fine so uh, now in this case uh, why i am mentioning about floating point type floating point types are not good for use they, actually they have a lot of uh, uh, negative uh, uh, points fine so there are various cons related to the use of floating point types one of the thing is they are imprecise they are not precise see we have a float a float which is saying oh i have got 32 bits right what is the range for the float it's higher than the range for the long long uses 64 bit okay the range available for long yes 2 to the power of 63 long is 64 bit right So uh, minus two to the power of sixty-three up to two to the power of sixty-three minus one, fine, because it is a signed type. Okay. Whereas if I consider float, the value, the lowest value is lower than the value of the long, highest, uh, lowest long, and highest value again is much much higher than the uh, highest long. Okay. Fine. They use multi sign exponent. Okay. That's how because they put a exponential form. Yes. Uh, the range of value is much higher but just imagine can you represent all possible floats using just the 32 bit itself with a much higher range okay i'll just come to, uh, okay let me try to explain to you Okay. see the point which actually i am trying to make is that out of the float and double double is slightly okay but float is something which should never be used it's there but do not ever use float it's never advisable to use float I, i'll explain a thing uh, which you may not have been knowing about okay just consider this number line you have a zero here okay Uh, between zero and one, between one and two, between two and four, between four and eight, between eight and the next is sixteen. Okay, fine. See, uh, you have uh, those. Uh, if I consider, let's say, the float point, a uh, float data type, right? uh, we have a fixed number of values which you can represent within this. as such if i consider from mathematics point of view there are infinite number of values in this right 
and we have just 32 bit and we can't be representing all possible values that's infinite thing our value representation is finite so the number of things which i can represent between this when the number of floats available between 0 and 1 is the same as the number of floats available here see it's an uh, exponential thing which is happening okay it's the same between 2 and 4 so what's happening now see between uh, 1 and 2 whatever i'm having same number of things that means my precision level here is half as i go between 4 and 8 it is still half of that my precision because now I'm uh, uh, between two numbers, the possible numbers which I can represent, the gap has increased. And you would know that, find this something, if I go to a float, uh, I'll show with an example now on JSHL. Okay, let's see an example. I'm trying to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9. Okay. Fine. So that's a number which I'm putting in float A. What has A got? What do you think A has got? Filter. Uh, percentage. Uh, Twelve and zero f vaccination comma and a let's print this what is it printing see one two three four five six seven oh it, i had tried to put uh eight nine and it has now got what it has what it could store was 92. Fine. Let's make A as instead of 89, let me make it 87. And let's print 84. Okay. You do not have a representation of a float using the float type. I cannot represent any value between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 4 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 2. There's a gap of eight between two representations. So if you are if you are trying to involve large values, the precision is very bad with floating point float data type. With double, it is still tolerable. But remember, these float and double are imprecise. The precision. As you go away from zero, the precision keeps on falling and it falls exponentially. Okay, near to zero, the precision is very, very high. Yes, it's a very good precision. But you go away from zero and the precision falls. Okay, so float is not to be used. And that's something which has been like uh, it's universally said, okay, never try to use float as a data type. Right. So, literally the types which we should be dealing with, okay, are int, okay. Right. So, we normally, we uh, normally, okay. Okay. Uh, so, from primitives point of view, int, long and double. Okay. And wherever boolean is needed, yes, we will be using boolean. So, from primitive point of view, these three types are what we normally look at. Okay. Fine. And as far as the reference type are concerned, okay, we don't want to fix any particular reference type and we use generics in method signatures, right?
okay so we will be using generics there fine so uh, from that point of view let's see right? let's look at the categorization of the function interfaces okay so from this package if i look at this package yeah from this point of view of function interfaces from java util function uh, first category consumers so what are consumers the ones with the return type void let's look at uh, so yeah uh, just keep these things in mind int long double we need to talk about the int long double and we need to talk about uh, reference type that would mean some generic type okay so yeah we would have something which takes uh, so it's only consumer return type void right so method signatures Draw it here. And so if I look at consumers, okay. So consumers, yes, the different types of consumers will be uh, okay. Consumer as a function, okay, it's something which takes input. Okay, so input can be int, then we call it as int consumer. Function could be, uh, the input will be long, input will be double, okay, int long double and the generic type. So, we will say, okay, some type T. Right? So, four like this, okay, and then uh, there will be two inputs, there are consumers which take two input. Right? So, we will have something called by consumer. Return type is what, that is the whole point, okay. So these are nothing but uh, what is this set of function interfaces? The most commonly used method signatures. Okay, so we uh, very commonly yes uh, we have one of the signatures where we have a return type word, one such set of methods. Okay, one thing in all of the consumers, the name of the that abstract method name is called XM. Okay, return type is going to be white because it's a consumer. Okay, right. Now let me show that list from the presentation. Okay. So consumer function with parameters and return type void. So one or more parameter. And so here is that list. Okay. Uh, second category would be the supplier category. Functions with no, they don't take inputs, but they return a value. Zero input, but returning a value. Okay. Uh, you have the next category, which is a predicate. Fine. Where return type is Boolean. They take parameters but return a boolean. So give inputs and it will just return true or false. Okay. And then we have a proper function. They take inputs that return a value also. Return type other than void will be there. Okay. Void and boolean. Right. But they will have inputs also. And uh, if the input and re uh, return type are the same, we call it as a unary operator. Right. Or binary operator because inputs and return types, all three types are same. Okay, so that is how the categorization I have done. Okay, and here is the, uh, these are the names of the abstract method. Okay, if it is a consumer, there are eight kind of consumers. So, these are the eight functional interfaces in the java.util function package, int consumer. Input is a int, return void. Input is long, input is double and simply a consumer. So, input is any reference type. So, it is a type T. Okay. So, just like we have one input, we can have two inputs. So, it is a uh, by consumer of t comma u, okay, two inputs t and u, fine. Or now a combination of primitive and the reference type. So, here it is obj int consumer, fine, some object and an integer, okay, fine. So, I think uh, you understand the method signature, obj int consumer. Do you get the method signature? No. Okay, I, I think I'll show you. Okay. So if I'm talking about int consumer, I'll just put the methods here. Okay. So if it's an int consumer, okay, for int consumer, I'm just giving example for int consumer. It would mean long and double consumer as well. Fine. So for all primitives, I'll just give example of int consumer. Okay. So public 
void okay method name is always except because it's a consumer and parameter is a int okay fine so one input okay if i just say consumer of some type p we'll have the public void method name is except parameter is okay okay if i say by consumer fine of t comma u okay so two inputs now except method will take two inputs two different types okay then something like obj Okay. So obj int consumer uh, it takes uh, sorry obj int consumer because there's uh, fine it would have one type parameter and the method should be saying okay uh, void method says okay I'll be taking one as reference type and other as the int okay but just like we have obj int consumer we'll be having the long consumer and double consumer as well okay so that way we got the eight functional interfaces which are category consumer okay return type void okay next category is the supplier fine so we have the uh, five suppliers are there okay method name here sorry uh, it's not always get i'll have to put that method signature here There are five suppliers, and which are the five suppliers? Only for supplier, we have uh, one more additional in supplier. Okay. Now, if it's an in supplier, the method name, the method name here is dependent on the return type. Method name is always dependent on the return type. Remember this. Okay. So here, what's the return type? Int. method will be get as int. no inputs it's a supplier so no inputs supplier means no inputs so this is our uh, function interface called int supplier and it has this method abstract i'm just listing only the abstract method the other methods as well default and static methods available in many of these okay Right. Just like we have in supply, long supply, double supply, there's also a Boolean supply. Okay. And no parameters, method name dependent on the return type. Okay. And the one which is a simple supplier is going to be like this. So when we say supplier, yeah, okay. Met, uh, supplier of type T, generally, okay, so it will say yes, I am returning T, and method name. In that case, the method name is get, okay, for the generic one, okay. So that way we have got five, int long double, three of them, boolean. And that's the fourth one, and fifth one is the supply, simple supplier like this. Okay. And after predicate, the next one is yeah, okay. This is predicate. Right. So in predicate, long predicate, double predicate. In predicate, return type is Boolean, and therefore the method name is always test. Right. You test uh, input and return true or false. Okay. okay. So predicate five of them. So if, if I say int predicate. Okay. Then it would have a method called public method returns boolean. It's a predicate, so return in is boolean, name of the method is test, and the parameter will be int. Okay, similar to int, uh, we have the uh, long double, okay, 
and then we would have a simple predicate of some type t which will say fine returns boolean test is the method input is t okay and we also have one called by predicate of t comma u so two inputs but still returning boolean And so that way we have the five predicates. Uh, after predicates, I think we can have a look at the function. Next category would be function. Okay, so method name here was test, and now we have function. The name of the abstract method is apply. Okay, in case of methods with primitive return types, the name of the method changes to applies int, applies long, and applies double, depending on the return type. Okay, so method name here, I think, is uh, fine. So, for combinations of three primitive types, int, long and double, okay, there will be six of them. So, I have just put them in some kind of an order here, okay. So, int to long, fine. So, input is in, returns long. Name of the method, because it is returning long, what should be the method name in int to long function? Method name will be apply as long, because it is returning long, okay. Fine. So these are one. Uh, what is, so they have an input as well as output function category. Input is int, output is long. Input is int, output is double. Input is long, output is int. Okay, fine. Same way, double to int function. Fine and double to long. Fine. So for generic type, yeah, this is there's only one from T to R. For parameter as a primitive type and return type is generic. Okay, so it returns a, a reference type. Okay, so this would have a method as, for example, so method name will be applied because return type is primitive uh, reference type. Okay, input is int, input is long, input is double. Okay, the method in all of them is going to be apply. Okay, whereas we have another one. Fine. When it says int function, input is int. When it says to int function, input is a reference, but return is a int. Okay. Clear? Earlier it was parameter was primitive and return was generic. Here it is parameter is generic, but return is primitive. Okay. And I have just listed these interface names here. And then for uh, now we'll have two in fine for two generic parameters and return type generic. So we have now two inputs in this case, two inputs. So when it says by function, method name is apply, but input is T and U, return type is R. Okay, and then for uh, two generic and return type is primitive. Okay, so that way we got uh, these are seventeen of them. Okay, fine. Plus seventeen in the function category. So this is seventeen plus the earlier was uh, five plus five plus eight. Okay, so that way this is thirty five already. And then we have the unary operator. Unary operator will be in unary operator, long unary operator, one input, one output, double unary operator. And, and simple unary operator would be for the generic type. This would be the binary operators. Yeah, I have been uh, taking example of this int binary operator all the time. Okay, long binary operator, double binary operator, and a simple binary operator will be for the type T. Yeah, okay. And so these are the standard list of function interfaces. Okay. Now just give one example which is related to consumer. Okay. And, uh, I'll take you back to what was seen yesterday, one of the things which was there from yesterday's thing. Okay. 
predicate after predicate we had the uh, function there were 17 of them okay fine uh, unary operator binary operator are actually special kind of function only they actually extend from function Okay, now coming back to what we had seen yesterday was collection. Collection of some element type E. Okay, when taking you back to collection here. Okay, we had seen the abstract methods, but there are a few default methods, and one of the default methods here, I am mentioning a default method. So we have a def uh, default method in the collection of E. We didn't see the default methods yesterday, but here I'm just taking one of the default methods. Uh, the method has return type void. Name of the method is for each. And the parameter here is a consumer of E or question mark extends E. I'll just put it as E here. Okay. So that's a consumer or uh, this we will call it as action. Okay, so collection has this method called for each. Okay, the, what is the idea behind this for each? And it takes a consumer as a parameter. Normally, what we do, maybe if I have a collection, right? If I have a collection of, maybe I, I'm just giving as an example, or maybe uh, I take example of, let's say we have a collection of account, okay? CA is my collection of account and a normal thing which we know is if I have to process iterate over all the elements of an account I would use the for each loop for each account AC in CA and what am I doing here taking some action right okay so instead of writing in this manner Okay, instead of writing in this manner, whatever that taking of action is there, right? If I had a function, okay, if I could write a lambda expression, okay, for whatever is there in this taking action, okay, right? Because what is the input to this? Oh, whatever taking action is there, what is made available is the account AC, right? So if I could Okay, I'll take an example. Uh, yeah. Oh, we have used such a thing in the list accounts method. Yeah, what does list accounts do? And somewhere it has used this. Okay, and maybe in this, what it has done is it has said uh, given AC, AC dot display. Just calling the display method here, right? This is what you were, this is the kind of code which you were writing earlier. And instead of that, I can do something like this. I can say, okay, CA, collection of accounts, yeah. List accounts, okay, list accounts. So instead of doing, uh, for each account CA. Yeah, CA is the one, uh, is my collection on which I am operating CA dot for each. And yeah, this is how it can be done. Writing a for each loop or calling the for each method. What's the difference between them? See, this is a consumer of account. From here to here is a consumer of account, right? It needs a consumer and I have given a consumer.
Okay. See the basic difference between the two of them. Okay. What's the basic difference? Earlier, the earlier coding, this is that earlier style of coding. In the earlier coding, we actually use a collection, take out the element from the collection. We are taking out the element from the collection, account AC. That's, uh, that's like, like uh, using an iterator to extract. Okay, give me that object, next object to me. And it is like asking for the next object and then taking some action on that object. You may be doing more things and then just calling display. Okay, there may have been some more action. Right? Okay. So you take out an object and then take the action. Or what is the other option I have? The other option is what is the action you would like to take on an object? Create it as a function. Give me the function. I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that action on each and every object. Okay. So you don't take out the objects but rather give the function to the collection and say take this action on all the objects. When you give the function, the function, function is passed to the object, uh, to the collection. Fine. Here you do the function. Fine. You are doing the function. Right? Taking the action, uh, taking out the object and then taking action on it. Don't take the action after taking out the object, but give the action to the collection. The collection will take care of taking the action on all objects. Here the approach is different now. Have a function for the action which you take on each object. Okay. Uh, what I have not shown here is the beauty of the method reference would make this look like, okay, instead of this, the way I would be writing later would be this. You would write only this code. Reading wise, yes, uh, I have this collection of accounts on which for each of the elements just call the display method of the account class. That's it. I'm just instructing it to take the display method. And my action is to call the display method which is available in the account class. This is the code which it would reduce to if you understand the method reference. Okay, and so method reference, uh, yeah, we'll have to look at the method reference part. Okay, so where, wherever we have a lambda expression which involves a single method invocation, we have a possibility of using a method reference. Okay. You're getting the point here about the for each method. This one, not the second form, but this one. No, no one is responding. Yes, sir, get him. Okay, fine. Then, uh, So, uh, friend, the whole point is here that uh, what is a method reference? That's what I have written. Okay, so let's look at this part method and constructor reference. So, this is in case of certain lambda expressions which involve only a single method invocation. Okay. Be replaced with method or constructor reference. Okay. 
fine so there are certain cases i'll have to uh, discuss case wise okay so the case one right so case one okay fine uh, okay the case one is where So this is all dependent on the input parameters basically, how the input parameters are used, okay. Fine. Case 1 uh, where on the first input parameter, okay, the method is invoked. Fine. Okay. On the first input parameter, uh, ma uh, the method single method is there. That method which is invoked, fine, is using rest of the parameters. in the same order okay uh, let me take this as one example fine so for example uh, i'll just put one more uh, example in the sense that yes we have uh, okay we have some uh, type one okay that is a i'm just taking uh, showing the types here explicitly though it's not necessary normally so I, i'm just taking some example where we have maybe there are three type uh, three inputs okay a b and c just consider if you have three inputs a b and c and the lambda expression says okay on a uh, let me invoke some method which is available on a method fine some method which is available on type one okay obviously only then i can call on a and i mean using b and c okay as parameters so if this is the kind of lambda expression Okay, it can be written as type 1 colon colon some matter. Yeah. Okay, so your first input parameter is the one on which you are invoking a method. Okay. Fine. So, if the input parameter is of type type 1, okay, fine. We will just say type 1 colon colon in that method. Fine. A is of type 1. A has a method called some method. Fine. My other input parameters were B and C. Fine. This is fine. So, for example, uh, if we had a lambda expression, okay, my lambda expression, what was it? Okay, given an account, AC dot display. Yeah. So, look at this. I have only one input, right? So, on the first parameter, I am invoking a method which uses rest of the parameter. There are no other parameters and therefore, there are no parameters in my display. And it fits that uh, earlier thing, right? What I had shown is with three parameters, but if it is only one parameter, that is what it could be. If there were two parameters, there would be the second parameter being used by the method. Okay. Fine. Okay, fine. In that case, I can write this as okay, AC is of type account colon colon display. Okay, fine. That is the example. Okay, uh, see the example which I initially give will be with three input. If there are three inputs, I will use three inputs, but you have to find the general principle here. First object is the one, uh, first parameter is the object on which a method invoked uses rest of the parameters. Okay. Fine. So, let us, this is case one. Another case. Okay. The second case is where uh, we use, okay. So, whatever the input parameters, fine. Okay. 
Fine. So, uh, for example, uh, fine. So, where all the input parameters are used in same order for invoking a static method. Fine. So, as parameters to a static method. So, if I have, uh, okay, let's say, uh, here type may not be important. So, I am not specifying the type. Type of ABC is not that important. Okay. So, we have some class. Okay dots because it's a static method fine we are invoking static method okay and uses a comma b comma c okay if this is the case okay in that case it can be written as some class colon colon static method that's it fine Okay, so static method invocation in that case, yes, uh, uh, you are you are having a single method invocation. After the lambda operator, what you are writing is a single method invocation. Whatever input parameters are there, they are used in the same order for invoking a static method. Fine, in that case, just put that class name colon colon static method in. That's it. Okay, so this too would mean the same. So if this is what is your code, okay, you can write like this. Okay, case number three. Okay, uh, okay, it's kind of a similar thing where all the input parameters are used in the same order for invoking a no, it's not a static method. Invoking a method on a given object on a, on some object which is available. Okay, let's take the example. If I have A, B, C, and here is some object. OBJ. I just, uh, in general, I have just said OBJ. Okay. And it's not a static method, but some, some method. Okay. Then you don't put, you can put object colon colon some method. Okay. Then I'll give an example here. Okay. Fine. So, for example, someone was doing uh, maybe system or print LM instead of, so if you have account. And you're saying system dot out dot print LM AC. And this could be a case. And what is system dot out? System is a class having a static member. The type is print stream and the name of the variable is out. So this is one object. System dot out is an object of the type print stream. Okay, and has the method called println. I can write like this system dot out colon colon println. That's it. My input has to be given. Whatever is my input, fine, invoke the method println on this object and use that input. And some of here I have just taken example of system dot out being an object. So any object which is available to me, yes, I, I, I here is some object which is available to me on which I am invoking a method called println, and I am taking whatever input was there, I am taking that as a parameter, passing it as parameter to that method. Okay, use it here. And so this is what is a method reference. The three cases related to method reference. Okay, fine. We have the constructor reference. So can you repeat please what you told system dot out? Okay. So what is system dot out? I'm saying this is a object. It is an object. Right? What is system dot out? It is some object, right? Available. Fine. System is a class which has a static variable called out. Right? 
in out what is that in that static variable out what is available is one object the type is print stream where the method print inline is available on print stream okay fine so this is what this part is my object okay here this part is my object and the other part here this is the method to be invoked on this object system dot out on system dot out invoke the println method and use the input parameter input parameter is ac is an account the type of input parameters account that's fine Okay. Now for constructor reference, let's look at the constructor reference example. Uh, there are two cases here. Okay. So uh, the second case is very specific anyway. So case one here. Okay. Fine. Uh, where? All the inputs are used Okay, and I'll take example with three inputs, suppose, fine. So if you have A comma B comma C, okay, and you're saying, I just want to return a new object of some class, okay, uh, and for uh, creating the object, whatever input I'm receiving, I'm just creating it with A, B, and C. So if this is the kind of lambda expression, right, the lambda expression simply says, okay, whatever inputs are there, uh, just create an object, okay. I will give an example of this later, but yeah. So here, it, it, so instead of this, you can write like this. You can say some class colon colon a, okay, fine. I uh, will give an example here. For example, if you want a supplier to be created, supplier of which one? Uh, list. Suppose someone says, I want a supplier of list of strings. Okay. Find supplier of a list of string. Equals. And to create a list supplier, yeah, what is the method you will call? Okay. There are no inputs. It's a supplier, no input, zero inputs. But I would like to return a new array list. And if this is the kind of coding you are writing, or you can simply say for a list colon colon e. Yeah. Zero inputs, right? And zero inputs and the constructor is also default. If there are inputs and there were being used, but then it's not a supplier. I'm just giving case of uh, in supplier. And normally this constructor reference uh, most common usage would be for creating suppliers that category supplier which we had seen yeah mainly it will be for the supplier and its usage is related to supplier only okay but yeah principally this is how it works that uh, I've given the case with three inputs okay so whatever are all the inputs which are there use it for creating the object of a particular class so you are calling the constructor and creating object, returning it. Okay, fine. So here we have okay. Okay, fine. Now the case two. Okay. Now this case is a specific case for creating a Okay. 
it's basically so this is uh, it's very specific okay so uh, if you are having a code so let me put the code itself for example you have i have a code which says fine i have an input which is the size okay and uh, you give me the input which is the int type right so i'm going to return a new and array of some class whatever the class you may be having for example uh, your input class could be a string okay and so if this is how you want like you would like to write yeah so this could have been written as string or equivalent to any and uh, again, again uh, i can say this is int function int function of maybe string array okay it could be any array even a count array anything so suppose someone says i want that int function of uh, a count array right Okay. equal to so one way would have been that yes i i would just say uh, uh, given an input size it's a int function that means it's a input is a int value so I, i'll call the variable name as size and it says okay give, give me the size and allocate the account of that same size Yeah, so this is uh, one way of writing it, and other way, okay, which is if I use a method, uh, if I use that constructor reference, so this is specifically only for array allocation. This particular uh, constructor reference is available. Like Since here the input is a int type, I have called it as an int function. Okay. And so this is how you write a, a constructor reference method reference, how we use a method reference constructor. So not in all cases you have a method reference and a constructor reference. Okay. It's not for all kinds of lambda expressions, specific cases of lambda expressions are there where you may be able to use a method reference or a construct reference. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, okay. I think this uh, I'll try to take at a later time. Uh, the date and the time API, Java dot time package. Uh, if you have time uh, to go through the documentation, and you can try to go through the documentation. Okay. Fine. Okay. And yeah, update account uh, transaction class to use local date class instead of the long type for the transaction date. Uh, what have we used for transaction date? I'm not sure. Let me just check. In the account class, what have we used? Uh, transaction, yeah. Okay. Achha, it's a long type, yeah date here is long right you are aware of this uh, date java dot util dot date uh, or have you done this uh, java dot time package anything no here like initialization was done using system dot current time release You are aware of this uh, time in milliseconds, this millisecond yes, value. Sir. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, have you explored that Java dot time package? Was it? Yeah. 
any exploration I was done using the classes from java.time package because that uh, date class is from the java.util package okay but uh, the new package which has come is from java 8 and that is the java.time package where date time related things are available so uh, we will uh, find time to explore that also right? but for today i think yeah uh, we are done with today's thing Okay. For this uh, exercise, yeah, you'll have to actually. Uh, okay. Uh, what in the meanwhile, what you can do is, uh, okay, for each, I think I have mentioned about for each and using consumer. Okay. So you can update the bank class uh, that. Uh, 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 list of accounts right it's printing the list of accounts right so there you just try to see if you can use uh, uh, this uh, for each as a method instead of the for each loop right? try to replace it with the for each as a method okay and just see if uh, some changes you can carry out on the account and the bank class to make them better Okay, so any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, any questions are there? Anyone? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Sir, one thing was uh, like uh, confusing for me that uh, the functional interface is which is having uh, one single access method. Huh. But yeah. ignoring the public method of object class. Yeah. So there can be many public methods of object class or Okay, if we know which are the methods of the object class. Okay, I, I will put that list. Uh, sorry, uh, just a minute. I'll come to the notes. And... Yeah, okay. Then let's come to this notes. Okay, and they are quite limited, right? Public string, two string. So this is a small list, basically. Yeah. Uh, these three are the public methods of the object class uh, which are possible for someone to make abstract in a interface because other there are other public methods fine for example but they cannot be made abstract because they are final in the object class these methods are final right uh, void method is wait and uh, okay, there's another one public and final uh, returns the class object, get class method, wait, and oops.
so nanoseconds when three forms of weight and yeah you know these right multi threading you have done but because these are final they cannot be abstract there okay fine a uh, interface cannot be overriding and making them abstract fine so it's only these three methods you are having in that list so when i was saying you ignore any of these three if someone has mentioned them as abstract in a particular interface ignore these three okay yeah ignoring the public methods of the object class these are the of all the public methods of the object class and since these are the final ones they, they cannot be uh, mentioned as abstract by an interface and you can't put these as uh, anyway in a uh, in a interface none of the methods can be declared uh, fine uh, as final anyway but anyway this is fine uh, these are final and cannot be mentioned in an interface okay but those things yeah these three methods are the only possible things there okay yes that's so the these three methods we can use in our functional interface they may have been declared as abstract in a functional interface but then it doesn't count as that so when i'm counting how many single abstract oh. yeah so how many abstract methods don't count these as abstract methods <laughs> though they may appear as abstract method in a interface okay especially when deciding about the whether it is having single or not from that point of view okay yeah any other question yeah uh, I have a question. Yeah. So the execution time of lambda expression is faster than the normal function, or is it similar than the normal function? Okay. Uh, I think it should be faster. Yeah. Uh, see one thing here. Uh, when we are saying this lambda expression, right? Uh, I'll, I'll give you one uh, thing to experiment with, okay? Fine. So, for example, uh, if I create an object, right? Fine. Uh, for example, that int binary operator which I had mentioned. Okay. OP1 equals and whatever code you might have written, right? Uh, you can, you know, for every object you can have a get class method. What will it give me? It gives me the class object for that. Basically, what, what, when you are doing this, there is a class being created for us. Okay, there's a class being created which is implementing this interface and overriding that abstract method according to whatever we have mentioned here. Okay, but this class is not a class which is going to have a dot class file. It's created on the fly. Okay. It's created, if we call it as a dynamic invocation. So it's dynamically created at runtime only. It's not a compiled class. Okay. So when I'm saying op1.get class, what I would like you to check here is you can use a method called is synthetic. Okay. There's a method called is synthetic to know whether a particular class is a synthetic. Synthetic would mean something which is created not from the dot class file, not by loading a class file, but it's created dynamically. Okay, then it's a synthetic class, not from a class file basically. It doesn't have a corresponding dot class file. Okay. See, the, uh, uh, just think if I had, uh, you have used anonymous classes. If you use anonymous classes, there will be so many dot class files. Right? For each and every anonymous class definition, uh, see, you are replacing uh, most of the time the anonymous classes, uh, class objects which you were creating in the earlier prior to Java 8 have now been replaced. Most of them have been replaced with the lambda expression. 
Okay, so all that would have meant so many dot class files, and so you are reducing under uh, dot class files number of class files. Okay, because it would involve loading the class file now. Oh, it's uh, there. Uh, this would be in memory kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, any other question? So, is synthetic would be true for these things? Okay. OP1. So, okay. Yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Sir, so libraries and modules are different the same or different? No, they are different things. Module is a completely different thing. Uh, and uh, I have, see, I had to start using the term library simply because otherwise I was normally using the term API. I, I didn't want you to get confused with the RESTful API when I use the term API. Normally I would have used the term, preferred to use the term API. But I have changed that habit of saying API. I, I call it as library. Okay, fine. Java library. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, fine. But module is a different thing. It was the entire. Uh, if I still go with that entire API, the API had become so large that it was important that we bring it to some small size. Okay, so there was a requirement why that uh, module thing was introduced. So module is uh, very roughly, if I have to say, it's kind of a collection of packages. Okay, but there are lot many other things involved in that. Okay. okay. So a collection of pack, a module roughly can be just said, okay, uh, like we have a package as a collection of classes and interfaces, a module is a collection of packages. Fine, but how to use in between, uh, how the sharing between two modules, what packages will be shared, what will not be shared. There's so many things involved in that. Okay. And how to define a module that also. So all that came in Java 9, modularity was introduced from Java 9. So can we say that interfaces are also an API? Yeah, interface classes, whatever you find in the documentation I was talking about. Fine. So fine, where is the object class definition? It's part of the library, right? Or API. Fine, API is there. So Java API is there and that javadoc documentation uh, which i was showing yesterday when it's available yes, yeah uh, could you download it or no you could download that zip file mm -hmm. uh, there is a zip file which contains all that right yeah look for the documentation javadoc documentation okay Okay, sir. Okay, fine then. I think so, uh, we can break for the day now and we'll meet tomorrow. Okay, sir. Thank okay, you. have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you.